Hi kids, welcome to our session, module 4, day 1. Join me to uncover a selection under the period of emergence, Hunger in Peru, by NVM Gonzalez, and through it, we'll discover the essence of direct and reported speech. And for our lesson objectives, you'll be able to activate prior knowledge and experiences to better understand the text and differentiate direct speech from reported speech. As we all know, period of emergence, that's 1935 to 1945, it's an emerging change. It's because Japan invaded the Philippines and the English language was widely used by the writers. Hunger in Baruch by NVM Gonzalez. Um, let me share to you the box story of this one. In NVM Gonzalez's work, the story revolves around the lives of a peasant and his landlord. Crispin, who is a peasant in the story, survives only for a parcel of land rented from Mang Cesar, who is the landlord in the story. And then the relationship between the rich and the poor is being highlighted in the story as well as the way they perceive things. Most people came to Mang Cesar to ask for a parcel of land to clear and develop it. When the drought or hunger in Baruch strike, Poor Pyro Crispin was not exempted. He and his family suffered tremendously, who had been eating only sweet potatoes. Pyro Crispin was refused to have rice, as Mang Cesar had only sufficient for his family and animals. Rather, Mang Cesar lent him a seed rice. And before we'll uncover the selection, let's have this one. Nestor Vicente Madali Gonzalez, better known as NVM Gonzalez, considered as an important icon among the Filipino literary community. Born in the Philippines in 1915 in the province of Oriental Mindoro. He attended college at National University Manila but wasn't able to finish his undergraduate degree. And while in Manila, he wrote for the Philippine Graphic and edited Evening News Magazine and Manila Chronicle. And then in 1934, his first poem was established. Though his lack of college degree didn't stop him from pursuing teaching. That's why in 1997, he was proclaimed National Artist of the Philippines for his creative genius in shaping the Philippine story and novel, making a new clearing within the English idiom and tradition on which he established an authentic vocabulary. And let's have this one demystify the words before we'll read the excerpt. I want you to unscramble the jumbled letters to reveal the words from the selection. Measure for rice equivalent to 98 liters. What do you think is the answer? Okay. One point for that. To murmur in discontent to complain in low, distinct voice. Mm -hmm. Congratulations! Use as a title of God.
very good. Byproducts of sugar making process usually comes from cane or sugar beets. Wow, that's amazing. To make a loan. To make a loan. Wow. Now you're ready to have this excerpt, Hunger in Baruch by NBM Gonzalez. So let me read to you. Pyro Crispin looked sideways in the direction of the horse butcher, enjoying his feet. Almost shyly, like a young girl, he said, I, it's about some rice. I have my children and my wife. You know how it is, said Pyro Crispin. Mang Cesar shook his head, crumbled a little, and began slapping the side of his pants with his letter horse whip. Payments were hard to collect. Usually, he had to send out somebody with a caravan in a car to get his due, and Mang Cesar did not have much rice to give. He had sold all his palai except several cabinets for his own household supply during the rest of the year. And Putru, and yes, three other horses needed rice husks for feed every day. Your sweet potato pot not yell this year? He asked Barry Crispin. The tenant looked up and Mang Cesar gaped and then said, For three weeks now, we've eaten nothing but sweet potatoes. Providence will it. So perhaps... I'm afraid, said Mang Cesar slowly. I can't let you have any. I'll pay you double next harvest, offered Barry Crispin. It's a long time off, and besides, I have the rights to give to men like you. I. It's really hard with men like us, agreed Barry Crispin. Putro had emptied his pail of rice husk and molasses and now kicked it away. The horse attracted Pyro Crispin's attention was more, and as if speaking to himself, he repeated, It's really hard with us. If only the rain comes. As though he had not heard, a man Caesar turned to his horse, leaving the pail where it lay overturned on a dry, dusty ground. He tied the horse to a coconut tree nearby, pulled off the wet sack that covered the animal's back, and with this gently rubbed his flocks, addressing Parkinson, he said, I've nothing to lend anyone anymore. I'm afraid. It ended that Parkinson's wisdom triumphed over the desire to fulfill their cravings and plant the seeds instead, hoping to get... A good harvest. So, though Mang Cesar didn't have that much rice to give, but rather he lent Perry Crispin a seed rice. Okay, Lee Jack. Describe the economic condition of Perry Crispin. Harry Crispin experienced a drastic hunger due to a long season of drought. What was it that Harry Crispin wanted from Mang Cesar? He wanted to, to leave the farming and go back to trading or his old job, a carpenter or a fisherman. What kind of person was Mang Cesar? He had some property, of course, and was esteemed by people or respected by people. What social problem is presented in the story? It's about how people think is anchored on his status in life and in the society he belongs. And now let's link it. He said what? 
analyze the following conversations between Mang Cesar and Paring Crispin. Paring Crispin, you have it there. Quotation marks. While Mang Cesar, it is how it is being said. No? By Paris Crispin. And this is good to know. A direct speech is a sentence that gives a statement or thought in its original form according to how the original speaker said it. He planted drugs in our land, replied Paris Crispin. So you have their quotation marks. And remember, according to how the original speaker said it. Reported speech is a sentence that expresses the content of a statement without quoting just like what is done in direct speech. The quotation marks are omitted in the reported speech. And the word that is added in the reported speech, however, it is also correct without tape. So reported, we have to include add or without that. Harry Crispin replied that he had planted rice in their land. So, it belongs to reported speech. Now, let's try. Mang says for visiting the coffee plantation, Salmo said. Is it direct or reported? Okay. Nice try. Selmo stated that he is in charge of the farm in Mindoro. Wow! Mang Cesar asked Selmo to scatter the seeds. A young boy reported. Okay, let's try to see if it's correct. Wow! Amazing dragon! He reported that there are a lot of mosquitoes in the area. Congratulations! The smoke will keep the mosquitoes away, Mang Cesar replied. And I want you to remember that the direct speech is writing down or reporting the actual words that were said by a speaker. And for indirect speech, sometimes known as reported speech, is when something that has been said is reported. Hope that you've learned something about reported and then direct speech. And thank you so much for listening and I'll see you in our next virtual class. Bye.